Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey watching 90 Day Fiancé. Let's get to it. Help me find out where I need to go. I got a lot of emotions going through me right now. A lot of emotions. Yes, as suspected, totally normal. Uh, Don't shame yourself for having them. Be okay with them. Be vulnerable. Trust. Give her a chance. Let's see if he does that. Fly all the way over here, Sierra, and now I have to leave. Now I'm sad, angry, frustrated. Okay, so great sign. He can identify his feelings when she's not around. Now communicate those feelings. Give her a chance to take care of you. That's what you want. We all want that. When we're hurt, particularly by our spouse, we want to tell them and have them take care of us. That's all we want, but you got to trust And you got to do it in a way that gives the other person a chance. You got to do it in a way that doesn't accuse them of anything so that they have to defend themselves. Let's see what he does. You asked her a simple question, and I wasn't expecting that response. I said that to build a relationship, it's a hard work. And love doesn't come right away. He got offended, stand up, and leave. She is saying that for her, what love means, and I talked about this before, Love is something you build. It's something that you can't just have right in the beginning of a relationship. And if she communicated that effectively, I'm guessing that would at least reassure him a little bit. But she, I, she didn't. Now, I mostly put this on him because he just just refusing to say anything. We heard in that little bit, the interview is like, I'm hurt, I'm afraid, I'm fresh, he's on the verge of crying. And then he talks with her and he's like, well, I, I guess we'll talk to each other on the phone. So not telling her, I'm hurt, I'm afraid, I'm frustrated, I don't know what to do. When he asked you that question, do you love me? You didn't say yes, and that really hurt me. If he said that and trusted her, she'd say, okay, I hear you. Hopefully she would say something like this. I get why you're hurt by that. I guess I would have been hurt if you would have answered that way too. But understand that my definition of love is maybe different than yours. When I use the word love, it means this, which is something that I definitely see building with you. And I I wouldn't have it with anyone in the beginning of a relationship. So, you know, but they're just not talking and it's mostly because he's giving that defensive nonchalantness. But you see the pain underneath it, right? So let's, let's watch. I have feelings for him. I do. The other thing I'll say is for some people to say you love someone in the beginning of a dating relationship, for some people that diminishes the statement of I love you, right? For some people, they'll say, look, I reserve the phrase, I love you, for very severe, sure love. (laughs) And although right now I have a, a lot of feelings for you, if I said I love you now, it would diminish the statements of love I'll have for you later because those I want, I want to differentiate between the feelings I have now and the, and the bigger feelings I'm, I'm going to have for you later. That's a perfectly reasonable thing, too. I wonder, I, I, she seems to be saying things in that direction, too. But anyway, she's now going to run over to him. Let's, they're, they're giving us the, the romantic music, so maybe something good is going to happen. Michael, what's going on? I'm with you, I'm on your side. Nothing bad happened. I don't understand what is in your head. So for the at least third time, if not several more times that they didn't show us, she is trying to bridge the gap. She is doing her attempt at saying, hey, tell me what's going on. 
let's talk about this. And up until this point, he just continues to give nonchalantness, what I'm going to call passive-aggressive quietness and, and distance as a way of trying to communicate that he's hurt, which I don't think is working. So let's continue. Let's see what he does here. She's, she's, ha, she has the olive branch. Let's see if he grabs it. Just calm down, relax. Everything's going to be okay. your attitude, Natalie. You act like a little kid. I feel like you don't take things serious. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess he has this ongoing complaint and request around her, her attitude or her way, which I could see, but I don't think that's the central issue here. Uh, I, there, as I said before, there are various different ways one can deal with vulnerability. And, you know, tremendous need, tremendous longing for love and reassurance, but deep distrust based on your history of people actually hearing you. But it's, you've got to communicate it somehow. And one of the ways that avoiding people will do it is by turning themselves off, which he's done a lot of thus far. The other way, the other way is to criticize and to say, and to, have that be the gestalt of what you're saying. The, the entirety of what you're saying is not, I'm sad, I'm hurt, I need you, I don't know what to do, I'm frustrated. Instead, to just be like, there's something wrong with you. In the hope that they'll say, oh, I hear you, I'll change. And I love you so much. Like, it, it's, it's not likely to work. It's just likely to hurt her feelings, naturally. And then she's going to get defended, so let's watch. One. Now, I want to be clear. He can have a legitimate, validated complaint and request about her childishness, whatever that is. I'm just saying that until they talk about the fundamental issue here, which he keeps bringing back to when the when she's not around, which is that they asked her, do you love him? And she didn't say yes. That's the central issue that he has defined. So until that repair happens, you're going to have a hard time communicating about some other issue, like, I don't like the way you get childish sometimes. Walk me in the game. Cool. Right, so now she's hurt because she has extended herself a lot during this uh, evening. And she goes to him and says, how do you feel? What's going on? And, she, and he's like, you're just childish. And so she's hurt. And now she's being hostile and saying, go, get out of here. So ugh, it's just hard to watch. There just seems so much potential, but it's maybe eventually they'll realize it. Ugh, so he just said, give me a hug. And she says, no, I'm guessing they, so they, they seem to have shades of a similar way of communicating their needs when there's a lot of tension. Both of them will bolt, will separate as a way I'm guessing to, to communicate, Hey, I don't like what just happened. And they both will reject in the hope that the other person will recognize how hurt they are. So he rejects by being nonchalant, like, well, whatever. And she rejects by saying, no, I'm not going to hug you. And here's your stupid ring. And that, is, that does not bode well. <laughs> like until they figure out a different way to communicate their needs, obviously that's going to hurt the other person, trigger the other person, reduce the love and cause all sorts of chaos. So, but they seem like they're, they're just a hair width away from being able to work this out because they have in the past. So I don't know. We'll, we'll have to continue watching. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.